We started tonight, bang on time. It's 10 o'clock here in the UK. Good evening, everybody. Who's in? Cat's in. Helen Power, the one with the amazing name, is uh, is here. Big Homie is in here. I've never heard of Big Homie before. Sophie Ellen, There's quite a few uh, new names here. We're going to let people um, join for a second. Um, for those who are here for the first time, or those watching on the replay, thanks for being here on the replay as well. Uh, for those who don't know me, my name's Ross. I'm an actor and a voiceover artist from Manchester here in the UK. Um, the scopes that, that we do on a Monday, Wednesday and Friday, um, they're not exclusively like for actors and stuff. There's a lot of actors kind of join these scopes. Um, but everything that we talk about is for everybody, regardless of what you are, where you are, who you are. Uh, Nina's here. Good evening, Nina. Um, and um, yeah, I turn these scopes on a Monday and a Wednesday as motivation and mind hacks. And then on a Friday, um, Vishal is here. On Friday, we do a book club, uh, which is called Bulletproof Book Club. And it's a book, um, again, that's all about kind of, you know, mind hacks, motivation, things that are going to help you get further in your life faster, regardless of whether you are an actor or not. Um, thank you for uh, sharing, Kat. Yeah. I keep forgetting to ask people to share these scopes. Get sharing, guys, right? If you're on your iPhone, I think you can swipe left to right. Tony's in the house. Good evening, Tony. Well, good afternoon for Tony. He's in the States. Um, get sharing, Tony. Get it out to the kids. Get it out to the people. Um, this is all, this is, this is I'm, I'm, I'm loving tonight's scope. This is stuff that I find really, really interesting. Um, it's not exclusive to the acting industry, but although it will, you know, it will really help you to, to be mindful of these things that we're going to talk about at audition. Um, but this is just things that we need to remind ourselves of from time to time. If we want to kind of, you know, win friends and influence people, you know, I don't mean that in a manipulative sense. Um, Fanny's here. Good evening. Um, how are we doing? Good to see you. I noticed you followed us from the Facebook group, so uh, Miss Compton is in the house. Um, thank you for joining us for the first time. Um, so yeah, these things aren't um, things to manipulate people with or anything like that. These are just things that we can be mindful of so that if we are mindful of them, we can make a positive impact by using them to our advantage. Because regardless of what you want to think, society will judge you. Uh, Warren Dino is here. Um, yeah, you know, people will judge you regardless of, uh, you know, of what you would like to think about society. We go, you know, very much off uh, first impressions, you know, what people look like, how they come across. Um, how are we doing, Warren? Kim's here as well. Um, thanks for joining, Kim. Um, but this is stuff, guys. Like, <laughs> I'll share a bit of a personal story tonight as well. These are things, these are seven little things that I looked for a few years ago when I went on a game show. And I don't know if many people know about this about me, right? But I went on a, uh, on a game show a few years back and used all of these little things to look for in order to figure these people out. I basically had to guess out of eight people in front of me, round by round, how much they earned, what their lifestyle was like, what their background was like, until I was left with three people. And I was left with these three people, and I then had to guess the highest earner out of the three people that were left. If I was able to do that, I would win that person's annual wage, right? I use the seven things I'm gonna talk about tonight. I am plugged in, I'm on aeroplane mode, Kim, thank you, I've got my coffee. Uh, excellent, I use these seven things to decipher these people's backgrounds, purely off appearance and first impressions, um, and I won £51,000 tax-free. To Tony, that's about $75,000. Um, that changed my life quite significantly as well, <laughs> to be honest with you. I'll, I'll tell you about that, a whole other story, but that came around through taking massive action and me thinking outside the box of how can I accumulate a nice amount of wealth very quickly in a very different way to slogging it in a shop that I'd been doing for 10 years before. This was after I left retail and started to think about my life in a very different way. Um, that enabled me to do a hell of a lot with that and, um, and was definitely a springboard to enable me to really take control of my life. But I used these seven things um, and I want you to know about them as well. I can't take complete uh, credit for everything I'm gonna share with you tonight. This is some things that, that I've kind of looked at before. There's a website as well called lifehack.org as well. You'll wanna check out, that teaches you a lot about this kind of stuff. Um, but tonight we're looking at seven things, okay? People will judge you on these seven little things, okay? So if you um, agree with me that regardless of, of what we wanna think of society and how good we wanna think of society and people, Let's be honest, do you judge people off first impressions? When you meet somebody, you know, can you help but judge somebody? 
off what they look like, how they uh, greet you, how they present themselves to you, whether they're on time. Uh, let me know. Let's hold our hands up and go, yeah, okay, you know, we're not judgmental in a terrible sense, but we can't help it, can we? We just can't help but judge people sometimes based on appearances. Um, Nina says, yes, I do. Absolutely. You can't help it, Nina. It's not like, you know, some people go, oh, I don't judge anybody. Of course you do. Admit it to yourself. It's true. I think we all do it subconsciously based on things like looks. Definitely. Yeah, but don't let the chimp take over. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's true, Michelle. Definitely. Um, you know, but it's also, you know, people can let themselves down on first impressions as well. It's not necessarily us judging people. It's sometimes people, if they're not mindful of the things I'm going to talk about, um, then they, they can really kind of, you know, just do themselves a disservice, really. Too much confidence you can judge, which isn't fair, really. Um, yeah, abs yeah, absolutely. Sometimes, yeah, you will, you can judge people, you know, um, incorrectly, definitely. Everyone is happy, judgmental in some ways. Um, definitely, it's something that we are, we must be, I don't know the science behind it, but we have to be pre-programmed to do this, you know, we must be. I'm more judgmental if I'm in a bad place in life, else I'm much more forgiving. Yes, I absolutely notice that as well. Completely funny, absolutely. I um, I get that, yeah, ab absolutely. You know, if, I, if everything's going swimmingly in our lives, and I feel this as well, I can let little things go by, it's like they don't bother me. Whereas if something, you know, <laughs> if I'm up against it and I'm feeling a little bit more pressured than normal and then somebody does something to annoy me, I will feel it a lot more intensely than I would do if things are going right. So that's a great observation to make as well. So like I say, all of these things could be um, applicable at a casting, guys, but these are just things in life, right, that you will do better by knowing about, okay? I'm really judgmental of negative people. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, uh, you know, but we, uh, there's always, no one, remember, nobody behaves randomly, okay? There's always a need they are fulfilling by their behavior. And that, that need is either certainty, variety, um, love and connection, or significance. You can literally um, figure out every single action on the planet by any human being by looking at those four things and saying, what are they getting from this behavior? Um, and hopefully you can tell them to get that from a better behavior if their behavior is, is negative in that sense. Rooty Toot Toots is in the house. Ruth, you've just made it before we start um, on the first thing. The first thing out of seven little things that people will judge you on. Number one, okay, you might guess by the emojis, I was quite impressed by the emojis that I used to title this periscope that I had an emoji for every single one of these things on my phone which is quite cool so the first one guys and whether you like it or not unfortunately and you might be self-conscious of this um, is your handwriting first thing is your handwriting what do you have to do normally when you go into an audition I don't know if this is the same for you guys in America Tony but in the UK we very often particularly for commercials have to fill in um, our kind of casting sheets with our names with our agents with our phone numbers all that kind of thing right according to a study and this is just, if you, get, if you download the PDF of this from the replay, you'll see how this is on the line. There's a link that it links to actually of the study, because you know all of the science. So according to a study, the way someone writes and the size, this is the interesting, the size of their handwriting can tell you certain things about the person. According to the research, which was conducted by the National Pen Company, I don't know how legit they are, guys, by the way. Okay, okay maybe that's why I haven't got gas lately, <laughs> says Tony. Um, according to the research, yeah, okay, um, it's revealed that persons with small handwriting tend to be shy, meticulous, and studious, while people who were more outgoing um, uh, tried uh, gain, gaining attention with large handwriting. Um, those who take things seriously put more pressure on the pen uh, when they write, while light-handed writers typically tend to be empathetic and are more sensitive. Oh, non Ruth. Ruth says, How many casting notes know any of this? And they're not looking at your sheets, honestly. This is more kind of like life life stuff as opposed to acting stuff tonight. You can take a screenshot of that if you want, guys, but I will um, I will put the PDF up online as well for the replay that will be online from tomorrow. Um, so, yeah, you know, there's not, not loads of casting notes that are going to look go, Oh, she's a great actor, but have you seen the state of a headshot or not headshot, a head sheet uh, with the writing on? They're certainly not going to dismiss you for that. But people will make judgments of you if you have to go and fill out a form for somebody for anything. I don't know, and it might not be people who even care about making judgments for you, uh, judgments on you. 
Um, but people will, you know, so there's a lot of people, when I used to work in retail, we used to, any, any refunds and things that we had to do, uh, they had to fill out like a pad, and loads of people, like loads of people, absolutely loads of people, would say, oh my handwriting is terrible, can you fill it out for me? And I don't ever write out for them, but people are paranoid about this. Um, let me know if you are, if it's something, if you've been in to fill a passport form out, or you've got to fill something in. Um, I strain my arm writing, so that's interesting. There you go, well if you take things seriously, it says there, yeah, people put more pressure on the pen when they write, while light-handed writers typically tend to be empathetic um, and are more sensitive if you're light-handed. I don't know, I mean, it's not my scientific research, <laughs> not my words, but the words of the National Pen Company, okay? <laughs> they might be legit, they might not be. Um, but I thought that was interesting, it's definitely something that, that I've been aware of in the past. I don't do joined up writing, does anyone do, I, I learn a school joined up writing and could write almost calligraphy style and then as I got older I just write block capitals now I filled out a form for somebody yesterday because he was scared there you go it's true absolutely it changes it changes depending on on Kim's mood um, but yeah it is like just something to be aware of and if you want to get noticed according to the pen company um, and you want to come across as more confident you should write bigger um, so if you're currently writing dead small you might be studious, but if you want to get attention, write bigger. Write bigger, guys, all right? Second one, okay? The colour of your clothing. Before I, actually, this is interesting. Before I show you what the colours mean, what are the usual colours you wear? You'll notice that I always, Ruth blames poor handwriting on a mum. Doctor's handwriting, ah, right, okay. Um, You'll notice, guys, right, I don't have one t-shirt, right? I literally have probably 15. They just all happen to be plain black. <laughs> so I know on nearly every single periscope that I do, I'm literally, it looks like you go, God, I've just only got one t-shirt. I'm, I'm wary of this now when I'm uploading the periscopes to YouTube. I'm like, oh, God, it's another one in a black t-shirt. Yep, there's another one in a black t-shirt. Oh, there's another one. I think it's like three where I've got like a blue t-shirt on or a white t-shirt or a jumper or something like that. I just have loads of these, okay. Um, uh, Ruth's a fan of purple. So tell me what colour clothing is your default colour? Because it says quite a bit about you. I remember when I had auditions for drama school, I didn't get in the first year I auditioned, I only got in the second year. And I decided the second year, after knowing what I knew about getting in the first year but not getting in, that they didn't write down your name when they were observing you in the movement classes and stuff like that. They actually just listed you by the colour top you had on. So I thought, well, I need to stand out a little bit. So I put on like this kind of crazy jumper that was known as my lucky jumper. And I got in the second year. Don't know whether it's coincidence. I'm the same with black. Good taste, Tony. Excellent taste. Yes. Get the black t-shirts on. Um, so yeah. So what colours are your go-to colours? Multicoloured clothes. Everything is mismatched. Mismatched for Kim. Obsessed with orange. Wow. Lifts my mood and brings out auburn hair. Yeah, orange. There's a guy, one of my mates in LA, Dougie. He's massive on orange, he coordinates so that his trainer laces are orange with his hoodie that's orange and his Dre Beats headphones that are orange. Everything's hot orange. Dark colours only, mainly red or black. Well this is interesting Kat, because red and black are the two colours in this study that people looked at um, and they're actually, well I guess they're complementary. So this is, what, this is what the science says guys, okay? According to an article on Psychology Today, again, don't know how legit these, these are guys, but I always find it interesting. The colour you frequently turn to for clothes or are more akin to says a lot about who you are. People who frequently choose black, that's me, are sensitive, artistic, love it Tony, um, and attentive to details. While those who love red live life to the fullest and are proactive in, uh, in their endeavours. People who love green are loyal and affectionate, whilst those who love white are organised and logical. And those who have blue as their favourite colour are stable, sensitive and are considerate of others. So again, take a screenshot of that if you want. What are you? What do you fall into, guys? It's not got purple, Ruth, I'm afraid, so I can't tell you what that means, but green, loyal and affectionate, uh, white, organised and logical, blue, um, stable, sensitive and considerate of others, black, sensitive, artistic, and red, lives life to the full. So if you're red and black, cat, then you live life to the full, but you're also sensitive, artistic and all them other things as well. Uh, so I thought that was interesting. 
So we do judge people off their clothing. I used to judge people a little bit, I guess, off all black. Remember that that big like emo thing was in, where everyone was kind of like all dressing in all that kind of black. And I thought all oh, black might be for sad people. Um, but then I started wearing loads of black, and I'm not that sad. Um, at uni, I always wear black. Well, I think kind of like in in the acting world as well. A lot of people wear black for rehearsal, don't they? We always have to go in our blacks for rehearsals on stage and stuff like that, or the, or the backstage crew always wore black, so I think maybe that's, that's something that we're influenced by as well. Um, but yeah, colour of your clothes, second one. So first one, handwriting. Remember, write big, <laughs> get noticed. Second one, colour of your clothes. Um, I'm guessing will affect your mood as well. If you see yourself in the mirror and you're wearing a bright red top, maybe you're like, right, come on, let's have it. If you're wearing, I don't know though, because I do wear black, but sometimes I still, go yeah let's have it so I don't know but um, interesting to know third thing this is one of the biggest things that tops the chart on and this is like you've got to be eagle-eyed to notice this I never really look for this but maybe you can tell me if, if you do third thing people will judge you biting your nails now this is important for those who are going what's this got to do with acting remember at castings where for a commercial you always have to go like that they always go can I see your profile left shot right shot turn around can I see your hands bang bang because there will often be close-ups these days particularly if you're advertising apps and you're using your iPhone or whatever or you're eating a sandwich or whatever it is you're doing in the commercial people want to see your hands so biting your nails is something people massively judge you on it says certain body focused repetitive behaviors can say a lot about your personality how your body reacts to situations whether by pulling your hair biting your nails or picking at your skin and could elicit impatience, frustration, boredom, and dissatisfaction. I know somebody who, when they're really stressed, always picks their head, like picks their scalp. Um, take nail biting, for example. According to research, um, it's suggested that those who bite their nails tend to be perfectionists, while also tense and often nervous. So who's, who bites their nails here? And are you a perfectionist? And are you often tense and nervous? Let me know. Pulling the hair. Lee always shouts at me for it, sweep it behind my ear, yank your hair out. Um, yeah, who um, who else is, is you know has has some kind of uh, what does it say um, body focused repetitive behaviour when they're stressed out? What's your body focused repetitive behaviour? Mine's just drinking coffee. I don't know if that counts. Um, so yeah, biting your nails. Again, if you, you know if you're going in for commercials, don't do it. What's it like in in um, the States, so it's, Tony, you Canada or the States, I can't remember mate. What's it like for commercials over there? Are, do you get to do this as well? This show me hands business that we all get to do in the UK here when we go for commercial auditions. Uh, let us know. Periscope kick, kicked me off. Kim, you know, it's gonna, I told it to kick you off because you've misbehaved. Biting your nails was the one that you missed, if you just missed that one. Um, it's a, uh, people, it says Kim that people have a lot of body focused repetitive behaviours that explain your personality. If you bite your nails a lot, research suggests that you tend to be a perfectionist uh, whilst also tense and often nervous. Yep, we do that with hands too in the States. Yep, my hands are very small. So when they ask for hand shot, I think I'll get, I'll get my coat. Hey, honestly, don't, I think, well, you know, no one wants mass, massive hands on a woman, Ruth, if they're having, showing delicate jewelry or something like that. Um, so I think the small hands is good. Like, don't worry about that, that's an advantage of yours. This is something that you're told, particularly as a guy, you know, kind of uh, when you're dating or anything to do with women and how women will judge you and tell me if this is true or not, right? This next thing, this was, this was one of the biggest indicators that helped me win that money on the game show because they made every single person in front of me dress the same, but they allowed them to keep their own shoes on, okay? How many people here judge people on shoes? It says, according to psychologists, you can correctly judge a person just by looking at their shoes. According to the lead researcher, a guy called Omri Gillath from the University of Kansas, just by examining the cost, style, color, and condition of the shoe, you can be able to guess about 90% of the owner's personal characteristics. Warren says he does that, such as his or her income, political affiliation, gender, obviously, I reckon that's quite obvious, um, and even age though depending on the shoes. So when you walk into a casting or you walk in to meet someone or you're going on a date, Tony, um, who were hooking up with women all around the world by these periscopes, um, do you look at the shoes? Definitely. I don't know, I mean, no, you know what, I think what well, I do, definitely kind of look at a woman's shoes a little bit. 
I think you can tell quite a bit, can't you? You can definitely tell, you know, particularly um, in a professional uh, environment. Sophie Ellen is here. Sophie, how are we doing? Absolutely not, no. So Fanny's, Fanny doesn't judge people on their shoes. Absolutely not, she says. Who else does? Warren does. Fanny doesn't. Anyone else who does? It's not something that's, that's my absolute go-to, but I do. I think I do notice it, particularly on guys. I look at them and go, oh, it's a bit scruffy, isn't it? Kim hasn't done that. I've healed Converse, by different colours. I get looked at for my shoes. Yeah, healed Converse, you definitely will. That's uh, quite different. Always put a lot of thought into my shoes for castings. Yeah, well, in acting, it's very, very important because one thing I learned at, at drama school was that very, this sounds a bit kind of actorish, doesn't it? And I, sometimes I hate talk like this. But for me, uh, I'm a bit of a teeth watcher, to be honest. Ah, oh, Nina's a teeth watcher. I'm a bit obsessive with teeth. Um, but I found at uni when I was at drama school that I, I often could really get into the character very easily by putting on the shoes. Didn't have to put on any other costume because the shoes would make me walk differently. I was playing a school teacher once and if I rehearsed in my trainers, just a pair of like Adidas Superstar, it made me feel very different than if I put on a pair of brogues and walked in those because I walked very differently. I draw the line at socking open toed <laughs> sandals. <laughs> definitely. Sometimes spot shoes, definitely teeth, sandals. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And um, so I find in acting, yeah, if you want to kind of get into a character quite quickly, I think it's probably more applicable to theatre than tele auditioning because you're generally sat down for an audition, aren't you, for TV, you're not walking around. Um, but for theatre, particularly when you're walking, treading the boards, um, shoes are a big deal and they will make you walk differently, they'll make your posture different. Um, they just make everything feel different if you're wearing shoes as opposed to trainers or, you know, just uh, something more casual. Um, but people will judge you. About the shoes you are wearing and if you're wearing well, it's like you try and get in a nightclub with dirty shoes on you can wear the same shoes but if they're clean you probably get in if they're not clean you don't get in five this one this now the re i want to just say the research behind this is interesting i don't know if it's true right this is just me reporting on a report i don't necessarily agree with it and it might be absolute nonsense but this is what it says your eyes okay people will judge you and what your eyes are doing. Now I agree with that, your eyes are the mirror to your soul and I can totally, I see in pictures, I always look at people's eyes to see if, if they're congruent to their smile and if they're, you know, they're uh, really smiling. A Duchenne smile, for those who are part of Bulletproof Actor will know all about Duchenne smiles and the scientific research behind that when your eyes are smiling the same as your mouth. So it says your eyes can tell a lot about you, what you're thinking and feeling and if you're either deceitful or loyal. I agree with this as well. According to studies, and again if you get the PDF you can link to the studies here, People with, this is mental, I don't know if it's true, people with blue eyes are less agreeable and more likely to be alcoholics than people with darker eyes. That just seems like a bit of a random sort of kind of uh, link to me, but that's what it says. Another way that eye gives you away is that a lack of steady eye contact, and I think this is more important, steady eye contact would reveal a lack of self-control and weak will. I think eye contact is hugely important, particularly at auditions or just in life meetings when you're talking to people, it's great to give people enough eye contact, not freaky eye contact. Too intense, I look like I'm giving the evils when I'm, when, I, when I'm not and people misjudge badly. Well look at that phenomenon that people have started posting about on, on the internet called resting bitch face, where people are <laughs> actually concentrating intently on what someone's saying but they just look bored or they look really pissed off. Rest in bitch face. People, people struggle struggle with that. Guilty says Helen Power. Um, but yeah, your eyes say a lot about you. I really do. You know, I look at that. For those, for those who use Tinder or any of the dating apps, not that I do that often. Um, I do a little bit. And I look at eyes. I look at eyes a lot to go. I can tell whether someone's friendly or loyal or you know happy. I can really tell in their eyes. I actually tell people to tell me when I do that, says Kat, so people will warn you if you've got a bit of resting bitch face, Kat. But yeah, eyes are hugely important and they've got to be congruent with what's going on on the rest of your face because your eyes can tell a totally different story to your mouth if you're smiling. I can go like that, I'm not smiling on my eyes at all. Pointless, whereas if I smile on my eyes, I go, yeah, you know, you look totally different. Uh, and people will find you more genuine. So your eyes, people will judge you on. Two more points, guys, that people will judge you on that you can be aware of and use to your advantage. 
Does your condition affect the look of your eyes? No, Kim, it doesn't. So for those who don't know, yeah, I've, I'm visually impaired, so I've got a, um, I've got an eye disorder, a retinal disorder called retinitis pigmentosa, which kind of robs you of your peripheral vision, and effectively, it's pretty bad. It kind of brings all your vision in, so you're letterboxed in like that. So sometimes it gets me into trouble because I can't see people next to me, I bump into them, I can't drive, I'll miss handshakes, fall over wet floor signs. They will always, forever, be my enemy. If I'm ever with you and you see a wet floor sign, please make me aware of it because I will kick it over. Put a glass of water in front of me, I will knock it over, guaranteed. Are we supposed to heart when we light something? Yes, you are. Absolutely. Heart away. Fanny like this. Double. You can single tap, you can double tap, you can triple tap. Use all your fingers like this. And then I get loads of hearts coming through. It makes me feel dead special and stuff. Uh, so that's that's really good. They don't mean anything. You don't get any prizes for it, but it's great if you heart it up because it at least makes me feel <laughs> like people are watching and at least listening. And I can't even see your resting bitch face, Helen. So if you've got that on, then it, it don't even matter. You can still heart away and I'm none the wiser. Right, six. Excellent. You do it, Fanny. You 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 heart, heart it up. Um, six. Big one. Big one. Punctuality. Everybody judges people off punctuality. How early or late you are, um, how early or late you show up for an appointment or a meeting could form an impression, either negative or positive, about your personality. Let me know if you're a stickler for time. Being late for an important date means you are creating a negative impression about who you are, while being early for an appointment means you are considerate about other people's time and are both mentally organised and self-motivated. Um, so uh, yeah, punctuality it sounds so obvious, but sometimes we just forget about it sometimes and. You know, we will uh, turn up late. I tend to be pretty much last minute, but always on time. I'm never late. I'm always pretty much just bang on. I probably should work at maybe being a little bit earlier. Nina's always ridiculously early. Um, that's good. Good trait, Nina. It's better to be early. The only thing I would say, working in casting, because I've worked in casting quite, quite comprehensively over the years, is sometimes you can be too early for an audition. Periscope's having some problems tonight. Oh, well, Warren, hopefully the, the replay will be all good, mate. Fingers crossed. Cindy Bell has just joined, good to see you Cindy. Um, yeah, the only thing I would say is that occasionally for auditions you can be too early because sometimes the casting editor won't be ready or the casting assistant won't be ready and you're running around trying to set up the camera and stuff like that um, and then if someone is like going, oh I'm here and I'm not due for half an hour, it can be a bit of an inconvenience sometimes. Uh, this is awkward, just join the scope late, don't worry, you can check up on the replay, uh, no problem, but Nina knows where all the coffee shops are. I was going to say, yeah, get there early, do a recce on where you go in for any meeting, then go and find the nearest Costa or Starbucks or other brands that are available um, and sit there. I would always go in. If you go in 10 minutes early, smashed it. You don't need to be any earlier than that, but if you're in the vicinity earlier, obviously it's better for you because you're not, not rushing around. 10 to 15 minutes early for everything is a good way to go, definitely, I agree. Do you have your own website? Yes. As in, as in me personally or for the, for the stuff that I run. So there's a few websites that I have for the things that I run, Cindy. So actonthis.tv um, is the main site I run for actors. Um, and then bulletproofactor.com is a mindset program that I run, a high performance mindset program that I run for actors. I saw that Tony said you're a stick up at time, not ignoring you, mate. It's a good, good, um, it's a good attribute to have. Um, and then I, uh, I also run um, a website called vofocus.com as well, which is for voiceover training, Cindy, as well. Although it's kind of uh, not, not taking the forefront of what I do at the moment. So we will be in some workshops this year, but probably not as many as I would have liked because other things have taken priority, that's all. But actonthis.tv and bulletproofactor.com are the two main sites um, for the acting stuff that I do. Um, I don't have my own website or anything like that. It's not the Ross Show. It's all about the community and you guys. Come and join the Facebook group, Cindy, as well. Facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash act on this TV. There's a Bulletproof Actor Facebook group as well, which is forward slash groups forward slash Bulletproof Actor. The last thing, I'm going to be honest, I judge people on this. Totally judge people on this. Only male to male, though. If I'm meeting a female, it makes no difference whatsoever. Um, maybe, <laughs> maybe you're all going to think I'm a right sexist. But male to male... I judge people on this a lot, and that's your handshake, and a lot of people do, there's quite a bit of science behind this as well. It's been discovered that people with a strong handshake, Nina knew it, she knew it, um, the strong handshake exude confidence and reflect a strong and confident character. Such people are also more likely to be extroverted, being expressive of their emotions and less likely to be placid. People with weak handshakes on the other hand lack confidence and always tend to want the easy way out of a challenge. Um, Offering a handshake alone could be the difference between the different, that's a spelling mistake, the difference between appearing standoffish or sincerely friendly. Um, 
it is something that I think, just on a on a male to male, alpha male kind of thing, you always bang, hand out, firm handshake, just it does exude that kind of confidence. I don't know what it's like, females are female in the female world. Do, do you handshake women or do you kiss or have a hug or what, what what's like the go-to greeting for you in a professional setting? Is it handshakes as well? It definitely is for us guys. That's, that's just, I just have no, uh, it's terrible, isn't it? <laughs> just not, not really aware of how women greet other women. Uh, rare to handshake. I judge females very much on a weak and pithy handshake. There you go, so Fanny does. Definitely, it definitely is a big thing for males, even if it's just subconscious. There's a little bit of like, you know, I am the alpha male in the room. No, I am. And you squeeze each other's hand a little bit and get a good boom. And I think how long you shake as well makes you judge people a little bit differently. Handshake when first meet, then hug at the end uh, for the females. As guys, we don't, we generally don't hug Kim, gonna be honest with you. Uh, another handshake at the end is generally it. Um, but yeah, they are the seven things, guys, that people will judge you on in life. And it's great to, you know, just to be aware of. So I'll recap from seven to one. So we've just mentioned your handshake. Okay, like I say on the replay, if you go to actonthis.tv, click on Periscope, the replay will be up of this tomorrow. You might even be watching the replay if you are. The PDF of this to download will be below. So first of all, your handshake. Six, your punctuality, okay? 10 to 15 minutes early is enough, no more. Five, your eyes. Make sure you're making enough eye contact. Not freakishly weird and not resting bitch face, um, but eye contact is good. Alert eye contact so that at least you don't look bored. Um, that whole thing about blue eyes, being alcoholics, that's not my research. <laughs> so, you know, we'll pass over that. Four, your shoes. All right, make sure your shoes are appropriate for, for whatever you want to give off, okay? Smart shoes uh, will make you walk very differently to trainers and they're gonna make your appearance look very different. We judge people off what's on their feet. Um, although some people say they don't, but I think in general society does. Three, biting your nails, okay? Make sure you, uh, if people notice it, you can come across as a nervous character, um, you know, highly tense, stressed. And for commercial castings, when we're doing this, shows your hands, that's not good. Why shoes, why not outfit? I don't know, you know, I think because, well, unless you, a lot of women buy shed loads of shoes, don't they? As a guy, I don't have loads and loads of shoes, but I, one thing I will spend a lot of money on is because I only have like, you know, maybe two pairs of smart shoes at any one time and a few pairs of trainers. Um, I will spend more money on the shoes than I would do on the trainers because I think shoes, A, you know, you get more wear out of them, but, um, they can really kind of like make or break an outfit, I think. I think a, a mediocre outfit with a smart pair of shoes um, is far, you know, is kind of far more acceptable than, than a smart outfit with a terrible pair of shoes. The uh, way they make you move, especially for women, yeah, and the way that you walk and you feel in them. I'm guessing women feel far more womanly in a pair of heels, I guess, you know, and, uh, as opposed to a pair of flats. Uh, and you're taller, so for women, if you're taller and you may be a bit smaller, you, you get a bit more stature, don't you? What would acrylic nails say in a commercial casting? N nothing, absolutely fine, as long as they're smart and not chipped and falling off. Um, funny, that would be totally fine, um, unless they specifically said in the brief, no long nails or only natural nails or whatever. Um, that's absolutely fine. Um, so, so yes, yeah, shoes, big thing. Two, the colour of your clothes say a lot about you. So remember, we said black. Clothes, what does black clothes mean? That you are sensitive, artistic, and attentive to details, whilst those who love red live life to the fullest and are proactive. Green clothes say so you're affectionate. Um, white is organized and logical. And blue, sensitive, considerate, and stable. So maybe you need to, you know, blue's a calming color, isn't it? There's a lot of color science behind website design, you know. And whether you want to make people take action, you use reds. If you want to calm people, you use blues. If you want to kind of have, you know, medical stuff is obviously, uh, that's quite blue and calming a lot of time because that can be quite stressful. Um, so website design, uh, we always go off colors. Um, and number one was your handwriting. So those who have small handwriting and kind of small squashed up handwriting tend to be shy, meticulous and studious. While people who are more outgoing try gaining attention with larger handwriting. So let us know what your handwriting says about you. And like I say, I stopped writing when I grew up, whatever that means. I stopped writing joined up, like probably at uni. I started writing block capitals because I could find I could write quicker taking notes in lectures than I could do when it was all joined up and it was just still a bit more legible. Now, I only ever write in block capitals um, and it's quite big. 
so maybe I'm just craving attention. Um, but those guys were the um, the seven little things that people will judge you on. And like I say, looking out for those, well, a lot of those seven things when I went on that game show enabled me to win £51,000, um, which was obviously a big deal for me. But we just had to guess, like I say, who earned the most money over, over a various amount of rounds. And everybody was dressed the same, but they had their own jewellery on, their own shoes on, and their own socks on. I think you can also tell quite a bit about someone by the socks that they wear as well, and the colours of the socks that they wear. Um, and they, that completely gave it away for me. I saw a guy who uh, had a lovely pair of shoes on, very smart, Italian leather looking shoes. Um, odd socks, Kim, yeah, it's probably not going to give the best impression. Um, they also let him wear the set of their own jewellery, and I noticed he had a nice watch on as well, which is a bit of a giveaway. Um, so the show was flawed, but to my advantage it kind of worked. And, um, and all sorts of stuff, eye contact, when people were talking to me. Um, well, they weren't talking to me, you were hearing bits about them. And obviously you could look them in the face, but those who uh, kind of were shying away, thinking, oh, you know, they, maybe they're not confident enough to earn the money that they're supposed to be saying they're earning. Um, Warren would agree. Um, but yeah, it's just fascinating. We can't help but judge people. It's a matter of life. It doesn't make us bad people. It's just totally normal. Um, it's what's going to happen. You will be judged when you meet people for the first time, whether it's a business meeting, an audition, a date, um, anything. Okay, so if you can be mindful of those seven things, you can use them to your advantage in order to, you know, make friends and influence people in a positive way. Not manipulation. It's all to do, you know, for both of yours' advantage, so that they get the best impression of you um, and you make the best impression. Um, so let me know if you found that useful. Hard it up. Share it with your mates, watch the replay, subscribe. Um, I'll be back on Wednesday for another um, motivation and mind hack session. No idea what it's going to be on, as usual. I only really decide on the day, and it's all dependent on what's gone on that day. Um, what have you done today? Let me know what you've done. I had an awesome day today. I've been doing some CBeebies animation. Uh, for those who don't, if, if Tony, you don't have a clue what CBeebies is, I don't think so. In the UK, we have BBC, and they have a children's kind of network called CBeebies. Um, and I've been playing, do a lot of voiceover, so I've been animating today. Um, a big purple bunny rabbit, <laughs> which is crazy. It's not, it hasn't been, it wasn't Teletubbies, Warren. Um, but yeah, a big purple bunny rabbit um, and a little brown bear thing, a little yellow frog type thing. Uh, crazy. Is it uni working on production? Awesome, Kim. Yeah, let us know what you've, uh, what you've been doing, if anything exciting is going on in your life right now. Um, so that's been pretty cool, and it's only a test that I've been doing, but hopefully if I get to do the uh, the full thing, there'll be 104 episodes of that, which will keep me busy for quite a while. And it's not work, is it? I think anybody who gets to work creatively, like hopefully we'll, you know, people on the scope are doing, and as long as you're happy doing your work, it's not like you're ever doing a day's work in your life, is it? My episode of Happy Valley, do you know, Kim, I have no idea. It's, it's six eps, I think, Happy Valley. My episode might be four or five, which is probably pretty soon. I think we'll be on three this week, is it, or four? I have honestly no idea. I uh, really don't know. I have literally a scene, a couple of lines. Um, they probably could have got the cameraman to do it <laughs> if I wasn't there. <laughs> um, but it, three this week, says Nina. It is great, though. It is a really, uh, a really great series. For those who haven't seen Happy Valley, watch it. Um, awesome series starring uh, Sarah Lancashire. Great day, did hospital news radio program. Awesome, Ruth. Completed some tricky tasks and had a meal with a best friend. Brilliant, who's, who's writing down at the end of the day the wins for the day? I've told you this on loads of scopes in the past. Um, who's, who does it, does anyone do it? Have you started doing it? Um, get a journal on your iPhone, write down the three wins of the day. So that meal with your best friend, Ruth, you know, which probably sounds like the biggest win of the day. And yet people sometimes won't appreciate that because they go, oh well, I've not made a million pounds today, therefore I'm useless and my life is worthless. Um, it's not. Tony does that too. Boom. Good on you, Tony. Um, do it. Write down three at the end of every day. Write down three wins. Even if you have the most terrible day of your life, right? Write down three good things that have happened. Advantage will always spawn from adversity, so even if you have the most adverse day, think of three advantages you've gained from it. And then, if you want to build on that, um, so Nina's recovering from her birthday weekend. If you want to build on, uh, on the three wins, write down three anticipated wins for the next day and read them when you wake up because then you're going to be already in a mindset for success, okay? And you're probably not going to want to turn over and just roll over. You're going to want to get up and attack those wins. 
forces us to think of positives, even if we didn't have an amazing day. Exactly, Tony. And naturally, you need to realise this, and I say it all the time, but naturally, we all slide to the negative. There's nothing wrong with you. It's what we do. Our brains are perfectly programmed for a world that no longer exists. And that world that no longer exists is a world where we needed to know about every single thing that could go wrong in our lives to save ourselves from it. Literally running away from bears and saber tooth tigers. We don't even know about it anymore. So we have to consciously think of the positives all the time. I had a voice class lesson today. I really struggled because the lecture is so negative. Well, you know what you do to people like that, Kim? Punch them in the face. No, don't really. It's not good. It's not good advice and I'm just joking. Um, why don't you try and lift him up? You know what you should do? Um, do you know what I think is great as well in a really kind of under the radar way of helping someone out like that? Because he doesn't want to be negative, right? Life's dealt him a load of shit that's put him in that place. Go in with something like this, right? Brendan Bouchard's The Motivation Manifesto. Brilliant book. He claims he's preparing us for the industry. I'll just tell him to shut up. Get him that. Say, sir, I think... Um, Thanks so much for, for all the stuff you've taught us. I think it's really, really valuable. And just as, just as a thank you, um, I bought you this book. And it's really, you know, it's really uh, improved my life. And I just wanted to you know, pass it on to somebody else. Give them a book, right? And then they read it and they think it's their own idea that they've wanted to change. When really, you've just basically, in a really under the radar way, gone, I think this could probably help you. Um, and yet, so, that, so they don't fear it and they don't push it off and go, I don't need this rubbish. If you say it with a really loving, you know, like loads of gratitude, like, oh, I'm so grateful for everything you've done for me and I just wanted to pay a little back and this book's really helped me and, uh, you know, just, it'd be great, you know, maybe maybe uh, you might get something out of it. Um, then they uh, they love it. Uh, I did a long body pump class and interval training in my living room. That's taking action for you, Fanny Compton. Um, definitely, that's good. That's really good. Working out at home is, uh, is one of the hardest things really in terms of getting the motivation to do that. I did something called P90X, um, it's like a muscle building program from home, it takes you 90 days to do, god it was hard, some days didn't want to do it, didn't want to do it at all. When you go to the gym, you're there just for the gym aren't you, it's just a focused room and you can't do anything else really in the gym. Um, bar, get distracted on your phone and text, taking up machinery that I want to get on, hate it, although I'm guilty of that sometimes. Where I'm like, going, all right, I'll just have a rest between sets. Da, 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 and I've seen this guy, much bigger than me, like looking at me with evils, going, like, are you going to get off that? Or are you just going to text? I always work out at home. No excuses not to show up. Good, Tony. Wow. Good motivation. Good willpower. Um, something we don't get a lot of. So that's that's put to good use. Good on you. And um, so yeah, <clears throat> random acts of kindness. Why don't Why don't you go if you can afford it and buy someone a book? Give them that book this week. Um, you can get awesome books like Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill for less than five English pounds on Amazon. You don't have to spend a lot. Brendan Bouchard's The Motivation Manifesto, awesome book. Probably going to do this for book club. I don't know if it'll be this week or another week. Um, nine declarations to claim your personal power. It looks like a Bible. It's not a Bible. Um, it's like a bit of a Bible of, uh, of success, really. Um, but yeah, why don't you buy somebody something and, um, and try to improve somebody's life this week. I think that's, that's something that's great. If you can afford it, don't starve in order to do that. But, um, but yeah, maybe that's nice. Or even better, pass on a book you've already, you've already uh, read. So look, Mark Dharma is a, like a, he's one of LA's top success coaches. Gave me Deepak Chopra's The Seven Spiritual Laws of Success. And he, this is a second hand book, many, many, many hand book. And everybody who uh, has read it, writes in it and he wrote and um, pass this along with love um, and then when I've read it I will write a message in it give it to somebody then they have to read it write a message in it give it to somebody I mean look how yellow the page is proper old like you know it's like a like um, some secret manuscript almost so uh, yeah if you've got a second hand book don't go out and buy someone one maybe pass that along but write a message in it tell them to read it write a message in it pass it on um, ripple effect in it <laughs> throw a pebble in the river ripples felt way more than, than just where it lands. So uh, send that ripple out into the world, guys. Right, I'm gonna go. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you're watching the replay, appreciate you. Thank you so much um, to everybody for all the hearts, sharing it, all that kind of stuff. Um, and I'll be back on Wednesday, 10 p.m. UK time. Uh, pleasure, Warren, or like 2 p.m. Um, Tony time, wherever Tony's in the world, something like that. I don't know, 2 or 3 p.m. Um, and I'll catch up with you on Wednesday. Have a fantastic week. Well, next couple of days. Um, Go and do something kind, and uh, I'll catch up with you Wednesday evening. I can't end it. Oh, I've broken it again. Thanks for the applause, Nina. 
Oh, I'm gonna have to just stay on here for a second. 4 p.m. for Tony. Right, I'm definitely out, guys. Um, I've managed to turn it off. <laughs> Thank you very much. See you soon. Bye for now.